But before we get to Ryan Harris, I, I want to talk about a team that he covers, uh, that he commentates on. Those would be the Denver Broncos. We talked about this a little bit the other day. The Broncos pay Russell Wilson a lot of money. Ryan, they pay Russell Wilson a lot of money. It's a one point game. They're well positioned. Good field position It's fourth and five. And they take Russell Wilson off the field and go to a really a good kicker, a good kicker. But I just want to remind everybody that game was in Seattle, not Denver. <laughs> so in Denver, a 60 40 a 64 yarder for the win. Sure. I like McManus's chances there in Seattle. Not really feeling it. What's up, man? How you feel about it? Well, I'll tell you what uh, Nathaniel Hackett already said he'll go for it next time. I think a lot of people were shocked by it, but Brandon McManus is a Super Bowl champion. He's a heck of a kicker. You give that opportunity. The real problem, though, Michael, you had both your running backs fumble one of yeah. them on literally on the goal line. If that doesn't happen, you're not in that situation. But hats off to the Seattle Seahawks. They played a detail oriented really close game and one thing people do not realize about Pete Carroll he practices tackling every day at practice and sometimes it's pursuit tackles from behind by the D line or it's linebackers taking angles I mean that was Seattle just you could tell they were they were trying to do everything they could to win that game and of course they got the brilliant offensive mind of Shane Waldron but if both the running backs for the Broncos don't fumble it's a very different game, and Coach Hackett will never take out Russell Wilson on fourth and five again. All right, well, let's hear that. Uh, speaking of, of Coach Hackett, it still seems strange to call him that. Just one game in, I'm still thinking Nathaniel Hackett. Coach Hackett, not there yet, but I'll get there. Let's hear him because I will give him credit. Uh, after seeing what I saw on Monday night, uh, I thought I'd hear something different on Tuesday. Here's Nathaniel Hackett talking about the decision. Well, looking back at it, we definitely should have gone for it. Um, just not, not, you know, one of those things you look back at it and you say, of course we should go for it. We missed the field goal. Um, but in that situation, we had a plan. I mean, we had a plan. We knew that the 46 was the mark. Uh, we were third and 15, I think, third and 13. I'm more upset about that play before it to lose yards, to be able to, you know, Getting that there would have definitely uh, been better to be able to call that same play and get extra yards. But um, he dumps it out to Javante. Javante makes a move, goes a lot farther than I think we had anticipated. We were expecting to go for it on fourth down. And then you hit the mark, you know, the mark that we had all set before we started. We said uh, 46 yards, uh, 46 yard line was where we wanted to be. And uh, we got there. So we had to make the decision if we wanted to give it to, our, you know, Brandon. And we did. And it didn't work. It sucks. But hey, that's part of it. You know, it's a combination of a lot of people, and, and it, in the end, it lies on me. I made that decision, and that was our plan. That's what we said. That's the yard we had to get to. We all knew it. That's what we said in the huddle before we did it, and we got there. We made that decision. I mean, every game we want to win. Every game for us, we go into the mentality that we want to win it. We, we think we can win, and we're going to do everything we can, and um, that's just how the game goes, you know. That's part of being in this, uh, being in this seat, being in this profession, is that this stuff's going to happen at all times, and it's been happening, you know, my whole career, even all the way back when my dad was coaching, and you're prepared for that. You understand that. And uh, I mean, hey, you just got to keep grinding. That's the only thing I know how to do is to keep putting my head down, keep working, making sure these guys believe and understand the things that we need to correct to be able to get better so we can win some football games. You know, Ryan, when I heard that yesterday, I said, good for him. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, a couple days ago, uh, you know, good for him. Good for him. You know, a lot of a lot of coaches would have been defiant. But as I listened to it, like the, for the fourth, the fifth or sixth time, I'm like, well, wait a minute. On one hand, he's saying we should have gone for it. On the other hand, he's kind of giving you his ration. He's trying to explain it away of why <laughs> they didn't go for it. So do you believe they should have gone for it or not? I don't know. Uh, I just what, what did you think of it? I mean, I think you got Russell Wilson and you've been moving the ball all day long. They had nearly twice the yardage of Seattle. They were getting what they wanted. They just were playing sloppy, uh, very sloppy football. I think put it in Russell Wilson's hands and See what you can get. Well, and you had all those timeouts as well, right? So there was time to think about it. And that, to me, is where you really see the, the thinking process. I, I'm The most important thing is he took accountability. The number one thing new head coaches do in the NFL, they, they get fired before they even get hired, 
because they refused to take accountability. And Nathaniel Hackett yeah. owned it. That's yeah. the most important thing. But number two, he described, hey, we didn't expect to get that far that much on third down. So we were expecting to go for it. And what he's saying there is they're talking during that whole play of, okay, our fourth and nine play, our fourth and 10 play. This is what we're going to go. Oh, it's fourth and five. Uh, from where? From the 46? Well, we've been here in the 46. So the, he kind of took you into where they were thinking mentally. And so they had this number on the field of the 46-yard line. That's what Brandon McManus had told them. That's a super confident kicker, by the way. So you can yeah. kind of hear in his explanation the timing that was happening. They were trying to change the play to a fourth and five play, but they were at the 46. Let's kick the field goal win and get the heck out of here. But, uh, but yeah, I'm with you. It just he, he would say it himself. Go for it. And he's got to learn that there's it. a little more time. I mean, one of the things about being elite yeah. in the NFL, the play clock doesn't go to zero. It's zero and one, right? It's not a 17-game season. It's a 21-game season if you want to win. He has to learn that kind of calm quickness that you need to execute, something Bill Belichick's really great at and a lot of the other coaches. But I'll tell you what, too, Michael, it's the first time that Brandon Staley looks smart. I mean, he, I don't think he ever goes for a field goal, head coach of the Chargers. <laughs> and, and Nathaniel right. Hackett needed a little bit more of that in him Monday night. All right, so what do you think uh, about the Broncos? I know it's 0-1, 0-1, first game of the season. Nobody's overreacting, yet everybody's overreacting. That's what we do. <laughs> it's Americana. That's what makes football so great. But if you just, you saw them out there. Now, against a, a real opponent on the road, facing some adversity, they lose that game. As you look at the Broncos and see them with Russell Wilson officially, how do you feel about this team versus the rest of the division and the rest of the NFL? Well, we're going to take get a great look at the rest of the division tonight. I mean, who can win the West in week two with the Chargers and Chiefs? But I think the Broncos learned the most important lesson that you have to learn with a future Hall of Fame quarterback. You're not going to win games just because that quarterback's on your roster. You have to execute. You have to win mm. the turnover battle. You have to be able to run the football. And a lot of times, and this is not just sports, this is all of us at work, if there's a superstar on the team, you think, oh, they're going to handle it all for us. Uh-uh-uh. You have to go out and earn every inch, especially in the NFL. And that will serve them well. Look, look, they got Houston this week. Houston's no pushover. They have the top two tacklers in the NFL. They got that tie from the Colts. Houston's really building something. So they're going to have a great test against the Houston Texans to get those details right. And that's the best thing for Russell Wilson as well because he may have been coaching guys up and they may not have been paying attention. Oh, this does or doesn't matter. But you have to be at your best to play with one of the best players in Russell Wilson. And I believe they learned that lesson Monday night in a very embarrassing fashion. You know what, Ryan? I got to admit, I underestimated the Seattle fan base. I, I, I like to make fun of them every now and then because they take themselves so seriously with the whole 12 thing. And they got 12 up, you know, in, in the stadium and the 12, and they really think that they're <laughs> affecting the game. Uh, when your team's no good, when your team's no good, you're not really affecting the game that much. And when your team's pretty good, yeah, everything, everything can lead to a victory. But anyway, I didn't think that they would come at Russell Wilson as hard as they did. I really didn't. <laughs> I was surprised by the booing, by a, a little, um, there was some real hateration in that stadium. Did this surprise you? Did any aspect of that response surprise you? It did not. You know, fans, you have a right to feel your feelings. It's in the Geneva Convention, right? Fans can feel their <laughs> feelings. And at the end of the day, yeah. fans, you know, they, they spend a lot of money on Russell Wilson gear. They may have the green Russell Wilson, the blue Russell Wilson, the white Russell Wilson. That's, that's almost $1,000 in jerseys. I'd be pissed too, let alone if you got some for your kids. But that's good for Russell Wilson because he knows at the end of the day, the, the city of Seattle still loves him. He's involved heavily in the community there, uh, but it makes it easy for him to focus on where he is at. But I'll tell you, Michael, that stadium is the loudest stadium I have ever played in. It is so loud. It feels like someone's banging a snare drum next to either ear. You can barely hear the quarterback. All you can hear is just like the syllable. I mean, you can only hear that because it's so loud. And that 12th man is absolutely real in Seattle, especially because they get a special guest every game to come up there like Dave Matthews from the Dave Matthews band or other mm. rock stars and actors. So that crowd, that's that's entertainment for sure. Well, you actually might hear that snare drum. My 11 year old son 
is a drummer. He's in the next room. So <laughs> he, you actually you actually might hear that. I might hear it. Uh, I hear it all the time. You might hear it too. And you already uh, referenced it, the rest of the division, how tough it is in the AFC West. We'll get to find that out. We'll see it tonight. You know, what do you expect to see from the Chargers and Chiefs? I still look at the Chiefs as the class of the division. How do you see it? Well, the Chiefs are the class of the division, and they proved that last week against the Arizona Cardinals. Not only did they get Travis Kelsey their touchdown early on, uh, but then they used Travis Kelsey as a decoy for the rest of their four red zone trips, each resulting in a touchdown. And what impresses me the most is not just that they had a defense, but offensively, they were able to still run the football. I mean, Clyde edwards Lair has hit another gear. I think the gear that everybody expected that he had coming from LSU. And then Isaiah Pacheco, this guy is amazing to watch. Everybody watching the game tonight, look for number 10 on the Chiefs. This guy ran a 4-3-7-40 at the combine, and he looks like he runs faster than that at the line of scrimmage. So the Chiefs have a potent run game with an experienced pass game, one of the best offensive minds in Andy Reid. And oh, by the way, their defense is kicking tail too. So they are the standard to beat. But can you believe it? Justin Herbert's 2-0 at Arrowhead, going for seven yeah. touchdowns, no picks, throwing for 70%. He's not going to have Keenan Allen. That will be big. The Chargers did not run the ball as effective in week one against the Raiders. Um, but I, I expect this is going to be the first litmus test for who wants the West to hear in week two. You know, I always uh, tell, I, I'm going to brag about you for a second here, Ryan. I always tell our guests or people who, who watch the show, I'm like, I'm, all, I'm so impressed with Ryan Harris. I mean, he <laughs> is really, really smart uh, on TV. Great analysis. Uh, always has an encouraging word. Uh, you're well read. You got the books behind you. You're an author yourself, a public speaker. You have a great background. I'm jealous of your background because I see a, I see a Broncos helmet up there. I see Texans helmet. Uh, is that the uh, Army uh, Army yep, game? U.S. Right Army All American it? Bowl. Oh yeah, and you know I think you could use <laughs> maybe something else. You know, like and hey, I'll tell you what. It. I'll I, tell you what. You know, you send that and, to and, me. And, I'll put it up on the bookshelf <laughs> for a show. And I want to say. Thank you for flogging I, I was, me respectfully. You waited, man. You waited, Mike. That's one of the many yeah. reasons why you're the greats. You were so kind. I knew this was coming, but we had you yeah, sweating yeah. after that first half, man. Uh, oh, my but God. I'll tell you what. Yes. What an amazing game, yes. Ohio State, Notre Dame. And I'm going to send you a better uh, one. I'm going to send you a better one, too. I'm going to send you a better <laughs> jersey. This is the this is the go out, and, you know, you can get this one dirty, a little muddy, but this is not the authentic I, you know, I want to I want to really hook it up for you. If this is going to be back and it's going to be part of your background. It needs to really be classy. So what happened though? Not just an Ohio State game because okay, I'll take my my dollar with all and pennies. I think I want it all in pennies. I, like I said, all the pennies to replicate the whole to replicate the Buckeye look. Um, but I'm more interested in the Marshall game because that I didn't see coming. Oh my, they lost to Marshall at home. What is wrong with Notre Dame? Well, number one, they can't stop the run. That's what killed them in the game against Ohio State. That was a tight game until a 90 yard drive with 11. I believe it was 11 or 12 plays. And honestly, Michael, nine of them were the same exact run play. Now you got phenomenal mm -hmm. running backs. I'm forgetting his last name right now at Ohio State, but Kayvon is unreal. That kid is going to yep. be a first round pick. It's not just that he's got a big offensive line. But they ran the football. And I said it after the first game on air. I said, listen, if you can't stop the run, you're going to continue to see it until you stop it. The problem was Marshall came in and ran the exact same plays that Ohio State was running, and Notre Dame defensively couldn't stop it. On top of that, they lost their starting quarterback, and their quarterbacks threw interceptions, two of them in the red zone. Uh, it was a tough game for Notre Dame. And you have to realize as Notre Dame, you can't look at every game as, hey, this is the biggest game of the year. At Notre Dame, everybody else is coming in that way. You have to say to yourself when you're there, and as we were there at Notre Dame, hey, we're going to punish you for even walking in this hallowed ground. And they need a lot more mm. of that mentality. They're probably going to make a couple of personnel changes, some young men who are giving great effort but just not playing well enough. Uh, but make no mistake, they are going to continue to have problems unless they can stop the run. And, and we didn't even mention the quarterback. So the quarterback's going to be out for a while. So what do you do 
at the most important position on the field. Well, the good news for Notre Dame, Drew Pine is coming off the pine, and he has experience as recently as last year helping the Irish win a game. He was the backup last year, came in against Wisconsin, and was able to help secure some success. He also plays with a great spark. Guys around him play a little differently. There's a lot more urgency at the line of scrimmage, something that I like to see because that's how you win. Uh, and he also has a tendency to stare down one receiver the entire route, tr translating into turnovers. So he has to reach a new level. Uh, the offensive line has to play better. Michael, we are O-line you, and they have not looked like it for one minute so far this season. They can do that, and it's going to be up to Drew Pine to motivate these guys to get, to get it right this week against Cal, who's got a great quarterback and Jack Plummer and a talented defense as well. All right, Ryan, always great talking with you, and you are absolutely right. I was watching that game. Now, wait a minute. This is supposed to be this easy victory. Notre Dame was hanging in there at Ohio Stadium, and it was a game uh, until it, well into the fourth quarter. So I thought, I thought, okay, Notre Dame is going to be a little better than I thought they were going to be. They got to go and blow out Marshall. That didn't happen, but that was a really competitive game at Ohio Stadium uh, over Labor Day weekend. Yeah. It was well, fantastic to, you, to be there, too. The atmosphere was nuts. You had LeBron James, Joe Burrow. Hey, Michael, why is Joe Burrow on the sideline of the Ohio State Notre Dame game? Come on, man. You guys just let anybody in? You guys kicked him out right, and you right. let him back? What's that about? That's right. Hey, he left. He left. What's he doing coming back? <laughs> he left. He's coming back. He died. He wins a national championship at LSU. We could have used them. And then he comes back. And LeBron. It was him and Justin Fields and, on the same. They were both on the sideline. I'm like, hey. well, which one of you was the quarterback at Ohio State? Come on, figure right. it out. And, and how about how about how about Bronny teasing Ohio State fans, putting on the Ohio State garb? You see this oh. on Instagram? He put all the Ohio State on. He was like, I'm not committed. Oh man, so why are you, you know doing that? The most, you know, right? And the most excited was the athletic director for Ohio State, Mr. Smith. He was like, hold on. We're going to get Bronny here. I mean, come on. How many millions of dollars are coming in if they could do that? And it still might happen. Still might. It might happen. But he put the stuff on. Don't don't, don't dress up. And then be like, well, I'm just playing. What oh. could be? Hey, thanks for watching Brother from Another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern time on Peacock. Appreciate you.